Hello and welcome to episode 4. As you can see, the VTuber model is not present because this is my second time recording this. Because when I set up my capture card to play Pokemon Unite, it reset the default microphone. So this, my audio, was not being picked up. And I want to hopefully get this out by Saturday, and it is Thursday. So we'll just use a nice, nice PNG. Look at me, I'm, I look so nice. I'm... I'm so professional. Allow me to give you a quick rundown of the team we are facing first. The team we are facing is We Love String Cheese. And you know, honestly, same. It's been a little bit since I've had string cheese, but you know, I could probably go for some right now. They have got a pretty sizable team with a good couple threats. Namely, the ones that I was most worried about during team comp were Raikou and Garbodor. I feel like the team I put together was still the best team I could have brought to handle whatever situations came across. And yes, I'm recording this after my match, so I already know what happened. Very simply, we are going to most likely be leading off with uh, Reggie Weezing. Reggie has a life orb because, well, Choice items don't work on Dynamax, and I would be kidding if I told you I didn't win that today. Giga Impact, again, best move on Regigigas. High Horsepower, because I want a single target ground move so I don't end up earthquaking my wheezing. Rock Slide, because it's a really good rock move, and I want a rock move for the latter half of this team that you'll see. And Fire Punch, so that I can easily deal with Sizzle. 252 plus attack, 100 defense, 156 speed. This speed EV allocation is meant to outspeed a max speed Garbodor. I could have specced to be faster than Silvali, but I figured there's nothing Silvali can do faster than Regigigas that I should be worried about. Weezing, I decided to bring Black Sludge for just a continuous heal. I ran a couple specs and they didn't really have a good chance of Okoing Weezing, so I didn't feel the need to bring like a Beery Berry. Neutralizing gas ability. Taunt and protect as always. This time I decided to go with Thunderbolt and Clear Smog. Thunderbolt to cover the different water types they have, like Toxapex and Araquidid. And Clear Smog is mainly here to deal with any sort of buffing they try to do. It's also just good always hit poison damage, which did become kind of relevant. 252 HP, bold nature, 252 defense, and four points in speed to make sure I can outspeed Vullaby. Next is Mufasa, Landris Therian. He is back on the team again. I decided to go with bulky EV spread with a leftovers with a impish nature. Is that impish? That's an impish nature. The idea behind Mufasa here was to sit in and set up. Just sit behind your leftovers and the focus being everywhere else to just bulk up, rock slide, and EQ to victory. Protect is there in case I need to heal a little bit more with leftovers in order to survive a hit. We saw how well that went in week two. The other half of our team something like this and this is where it gets kind of interesting Aristotle, i decided to go with a sweeper set the only thing outspeeding Aristotle is raikou if i don't see raikou then i'm fine to just bring in Aristotle and try to sweep item is expert belt because for one life orb doesn't seem like a great item on Arceus. two I'm not planning on taking more than one hit, so a citrus berry just kind of seemed redundant. So an expert belt allows me to use their pretty heavy weaknesses to flying rock and ground, covered by dual wing beat, rock slide, and earthquake, to kind of get that damage boost without having like the negative side effect of a life orb or the lock-in of a choice paint. I decided to bring Tailwind for the last two mons just to speed them up and take my opponent off guard that one. Next, I brought back Joe. Here's his Crab Shack. Just a standard Clawitzer set here, using an Ayapapa Berry to heal off a big hit it might take. Triple Pulse, Water Dragon Dark, Water for Stab, Ragon for just the neutralness of it, and Dark Pulse in case I need to start trying flinches, and then Protect in order to kind of uh, scout and whatnot. And then finally, 
I decided to bring Dumpy, and Dumpy is special this time around. Mainly because I saw it got Meteor Beam, and when I saw it got Meteor Beam, I was like, I have to try this. So it has Meteor Beam Power Herb with Thunderbolt and Earth Power as two other moves that should be pretty relevant in the match. And then finally a Thunder Wave in case I'm outspeeding and I want to land that Paralysis to try and take my opponent down a peg. Here is the Sand Rush that Regigigas knows Rock Slide for in order to set up Sand with a Max Rock Fall. Also, I didn't mention it, Joe and Dumpy both have the exact same EV spread. 252 HP, Modest Dangers, 4 Defense, 252 Special Attack. Pretty simple spread for a Special Sweeper that is planning to have its speed doubled in one way or another. Now, with Team Comp out of the way, let me show you how the match went. How did you like that, uh, that Red to Kick is Home Run Derby video? Because that's kind of what happened. We'll still run through the replays because honestly, it was a really interesting battle, even though it was just Regigiga sweeping. This is game one against the commissioner of the league themselves. Most notably here is I do not see Raikou and I do not see Silvali. So I already know Regigigas is the fastest thing on the field. I'm going to go with what I did before. I'm going to press play with music off because I put in my own music. I'm just gonna let it run and I'll talk about stuff as it happens. In this first game, they end up leading. I obviously do. Regigigas losing. They lead Marowak Toxapex. This was actually a misclick. I meant to max Quake into the Alolan Marowak, but it actually ends up being a good thing because here, if you look at the text, Toxapex had a red card and they didn't realize that a Dynamax Mon cannot be red carded. And that was their entire strategy for this fight. They Dynamax Scizor, but guess what? Four times a week is still enough to one shot with Max Flare there. And then they bring in Garbodor. I decided to focus down the Tox Effects first figuring there was nothing really Garbodor was going to do. I could taunt the Garbodor, make sure it can't do any funny business, and then high horsepower will take out Garbodor. What I didn't notice... <clears throat> what I didn't mention before is Alolan Marowak's fall actually went to Weezing. I rewind here just for a second. There's the high horsepower, right? On this turn, Marowak ally switches. So the Thunderbolt that was going to Toxapex hits a Lolan Marowak and takes it out. So not all of these KOs went to Regigigas. Regigigas gave one to Weezing. And then of course, boop, 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 boop. We end up winning by turn five. On to game two. They end up leading a little bit differently with Marowak and Scizor. And here's the cool part that happens. I offhandedly predict the ally switch because I rock fall into the scissor slot. I rock fall because I figured scissor was not going to stay on that spot knowing Red Gigas had fire punch. So ultimately there was no reason to max flare there and I can just max flare this turn take out the sizzle. They bring out Thwacky to replace Marowak. They bring out Cherim to replace Scizor. And as we can see here, neutralizing gas is proving to be incredibly effective because the Cherim isn't transforming and Grassy Terrain was not brought up by Thwacky. After seeing the amount of damage that not this max overgrowth, but this next grassy glide does, I am really glad I ran this as well as I did. I believe here I just take out Thwacky because I realized Jerem was just going to max guard. And then 
Cherim comes out of Dynamax, and Grassy glides Reggie for a fair bit of health. If Cherim was transformed, that was most likely a KO. So I'm really glad that I was able to see Neutralizing Gas not only be at my advantage, but also be at the detriment of my opponent. Sure enough, uh, over the course of this match, it is seven KOs for Regigigas and one for Galarian Weezing. Realistically, as many KOs as Regigigas has, Weezing has that many assists. So Weezing is just as important as Reggie here. With that all covered, we are now four and two in the lead. Regigigas now has a whopping 25 KOs and is handily holding that spot at the top of the mountain in the MVP ratings. I do wish some of the other mods I had were getting up there, but after week one being kind of a flop, week two being well fought, but I didn't fully understand everything I had to do with uh, Gigas and Weezing, these next couple weeks are either going to be padding that lead for Regigigas' MVP ranking, or trying out stuff with my other mons to see what works with them, if there's any other free agent moves I need to do going into the rest of the season. We are approaching the halfway point. The exact halfway point just started, so I will give a roster update in the next episode and that is going to be it for this episode i am really appreciating all of the feedback i'm getting from my friends who are watching i'm glad y'all are liking this series i do hope to finish it off and go into the playoffs with a good well-rounded team and bring it home for the new kids on the block, the New York Metropolitodes. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, consider following me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dmgoodestboy, and on Twitter at dmgoodboy. You can also subscribe to this channel to be notified of any new videos I make or stream VODs I upload. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.